you got a ticket from somebody on the team and you are so such a nice person that you want to help to help him because well the spring is ending and we need to help each other so you go and you take a ticket you don't have like a real idea of what's going on but you are trying to to debug it and fix it and stuff like that so of course the first thing is like well like it's quite easy because you just put a breakpoint here and you go and reproduce the bug and you actually see the action that you're receiving so i mean you just need to see if we're handling the action if this piece of code is correct and that's it that, that's the first part that already makes such a simple thing like fixing just a, a, a state change like imagine that you have this on the view controller on the view model you need to go through the ui see where this is called maybe it's called from multiple places maybe the code is spread in different methods because we like small functions and all that stuff and here is like well literally you have the action so you put a breakpoint here and you know exactly where it is and and you can see if the issue is here because we are using applications instead of something else whatever but of course that's like in practice nothing is that nice okay like let's let's be honest here like uh, this is a small example so it's it will be easy to understand but in practice things are trickier but still what is going to be the problem i mean if it's not in your mutation of the state it's probably just on the on the effect you're making so you already know like you can go on defect and check what's going on you know so maybe oh yeah somebody commented the prefix yeah uh, i don't know who but very bad so it's not that it's like the panacea and like it fixes everything and you're not gonna have uh, debug issues anymore, but it makes it really, really, really easy compared with other ways of structuring code. But even what if you say, okay, yeah, but like I don't want to go with breakpoints because I need to do a lot of things. I want to see, you know, I want to basically see when I do this on the UI, what actions I'm, I'm receiving because this view is quite, quite simple but imagine that we have modularized the views and there are multiple view sending events and I don't know which one is the one that has issues like you can make your setup well one nice thing about following these functional ideas of especially with the reducer which is basically as you can see it's just it's just a function I mean we have a type but that's basically how the API is to, to make it nicer to use but at the end of the day like you need to think of reducer as a, as a pure function and that's it well, one nice thing that this gives you is that you can introduce the concept of like higher order reducers, which are uh, reducers that are not from your business logic code, but that give you functionality that you can just apply on every reducer that you have. Okay, so the like as a, like one good example of this is on the architecture. There is a higher order reducer, which I think it's called the debug. And there is debug actions and, and many like different variations of the same idea. But this debug, what it does is it basically hooks into your reducer. So basically your your like your feature reducer, the, the one that has your business logic, and it basically will print all the messages that it receives, all the actions that it receives. So we can showcase this quite easily by just running the running the application and if we see like just by opening the application because we have the we have the onload we already see that the application has started and it received an action okay so the action it received like we can see that it's uh, we received the all applications and then we like we we added the like there was a, a state mutation with the slack and we also see that when when we started we we received the on appear and all that stuff so i i don't know exactly what this application is doing but and i don't i haven't read the code yet but i can go here and say oh what if i click six? Oh, well there is no action so probably somebody forgot like of hooking up this up to to the receiver yeah and that that's that's exactly like the problem because as you remember we didn't put any action here okay but like, what if i do this oh okay so i saw that this is a kill this is a kill action okay so i can go to the 
to my review user and see what it's doing for the kill. Ah, so I'm just removing the application with the same name. Yeah, and that's what's happening. So you can see like, this is just a, this is just a, a use case, but I think it's a quite nice use case that when you are kind of lost, and I've, I've done this a lot on the, on the Composer architecture example, because they have so many examples, like they are doing a great job of documenting and giving examples for all the functionalities. Uh, it's quite like hard to follow like the one of the most complex examples. So I just drop a debug and sometimes it's even there already. And I can just go here and click and see what's happening. And it's like, okay, I see what's happening. And, and then I can go to reduce and understand it better without having to look at the UI code because I don't really care about that. So that's another example of the benefits that you get for free while using the architecture. And again, why you get these benefits? Well, because the simple concepts that you are forced to follow with this architecture, which is your state is here, the changes on the state are executed by throwing actions into your reducer. So your business logic is on your reducer and only there. And then if you want to do external, external things, you use the environment and you use the, the effects. So just because we're following this, this unlocks a lot of potential. And like we have seen how the tests are we as really nice. And we have seen how just inspecting the actions that happen on your, on your producer, on your application, it's actually super easy to do thanks to just, to just the, the developer producer. And I don't want you to think that this is something special that the, that the library authors have done. Like, if you look at it, uh, if you get deep inside, you can see that it's just a reducer, the same thing we write. You receive a state, you receive an action, you receive the environment. They are doing uh, like some stuff here, like to call your reducer and get the effects and, and make sure they don't break anything. But at the end of the day, they just made the reducer. So. If you have an idea of something that it's like, like this, a higher order reducer, something useful that it will benefit a lot of different reducers, because they are just functions, you can just make it and, and pass a function in, in this case a reducer. So it's in the same way that we all like to use map on arrays or, or filter or reduce because they have this functionality that we can just reuse over and over passing a function to modify the parts that we want. That's exactly the same idea here. Like you have your custom thing that you pass into the map to, to, to get the specific data, like what we did here. So it's the same idea, but if you think that this is your reducer and actually map is a higher order reducer, that's it. So you can see how a lot of understanding this is basically understanding how functions work, how higher order functions work, and you can apply the same concepts into your architecture. So it's like, well, we are just talking about architecture, but at the end of the day, we're just talking about functions that we all understand what they do. So it's a really nice concept and, and a really nice way of leveling such a hard and different things. So that's the second thing I wanted to show you, this simple debug functionality and, and talk a little bit about the higher order reducers because I think they are exquisite. 